A lot of people are troubled with verses in the Bible that seems to show works that you have to do works for your salvation. So they're worried about losing their salvation. And then there are other verses that talk about faith alone, not by works. So then there's a contradiction and a lot of people are confused and worried. But that's not a concern for us. All we do is rightly divide salvation. We just simply divide the salvation. So in the church, and look at all of Paul's writings to the church, he condemns works, right? But he talks about salvation by faith. Why? Because it's to the Christian church. But look at all the other people's writings. The Jewish apostles, look at the Old Testament, and you'll notice that it seems like if you don't do enough works, you're not saved. Why? Because this is not to the church, these are to Jews. In the Old Testament, as well as in the tribulation. Well, there are verses in the Bible that I'm worried about, Pastor. It seems to show that in the tribulation that I could lose my salvation right here. Especially if I take the mark of the beast, I'm so concerned about that. So it seems to show faith and works. Simple. It's rightly divided. It has nothing to do with you. This is for a tribulation time period. This one is for a church time period. So we just simply give the answer. No, this has nothing to do with you. This is in the tribulation, not you, the Christian church. This is you, okay? Let me write a word right here. You are here. You need to look. <laughs> you are here. So see, this solves the issues when you look at certain verses in the Bible. That scares you. Now, there's a group, however, that hate this teaching. Why would you hate it when this has solved so many problems in people's questions on dispensationalism, when it rescued them from a lot of wrong doctrine and they feel like that they can lose their salvation? So what they do and what they'll argue right here is that concerning this fact, concerning about different salvations, some people, they really hate this teaching. So what they'll do is that they'll give a logic here. So now we're going to go by logic. Now, let's recognize their logic here, huh? Because it is a good logic. It is a fair statement. Their statement is, if you think that works in the tribulation count for your salvation, then why did Jesus have to die? See, isn't Jesus' death supposed to be the completeness of your salvation? So then why are you going to add works to it? So then you're saying that his death on the cross was weak and insufficient. That's why they don't like this teaching about faith and works in the tribulation. The Old Testament, some of them will bypass this one. Why? Because Jesus did not die yet. So because he did not die yet, they'll just skip this. But then they'll say, but what about here? You, uh, where are you going to do to argue against that? So how you argue against that concerning about Jesus' death, his blood on the cross, is very simple. What? There's no way around this. No, there is a way around it. Stop using logic. Why don't you start looking what the scripture says? Amen. All right, now look at the book of Hebrews. Look at the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, and we're going to start off at the book of Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Now, look at the title of your book, okay? Does it say Christian churches or does it say Hebrews? Hebrews, okay, see, these are Jews. Ah, one, Jews. And then look at the time period here. Look at the time period. Look at Hebrews chapter 1 and look at verse 2. He's writing about what? Hath in these what? Last day spoken unto us by his son. So what's the time period here? Tribulation. Wait a minute. Tribulation Jews and their salvation is what? Faith and works? Okay. But let's keep this in mind. Tribulation Jews. What does, this, what does the scripture say concerning about Jesus' death? Look at Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10. You're saying that his death on the cross is insufficient. You can argue that with what, how you reason in your mind, but I prefer to go by what the scripture reasons, what it argues. Amen. And no matter how, I mean, let's be fair. This looks like a fair, reasonable, logical argument, and it's troubling. But look, no matter how you think or feel, like any scholar out there who feel like that their reason trumps scripture, you got to realize that scripture will always trump human reason. Amen. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, look, if you sin after what? That we have received the knowledge of the truth, 
there remaineth no more what? Sacrifice for sin. Wait a minute. I thought that, but you're saying his death. No, no, no. That's not what he, not, that's not how God reasons. How God reasons right here is that when Jesus Christ paid his death on the cross and you got saved by it, if you sin willfully after that, there's no more sacrifice applied to that. But let's keep reading. Okay, don't, don't look at me like a tree full of owls and say, oh, he's a blasphemer. He's a... Argue with scripture. Okay, let's keep reading. But a certain fearful looking for of what? Judgment and what? Fiery indignation. Well, this has nothing to do with a lost condition of salvation. No, which shall devour the what? Adversaries. Look at that, okay? What did Paul said before you got saved? You are the enemies of God. Okay, this has to do with losing salvation, whether you like it or not. Now, let's keep reading right here. He that despised, look at this, what? Moses' law. Isn't that interesting? Bringing up something Jewish. Uh, look at verse 29. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy, who hath what? Trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the what? Blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done what? Despite unto the Spirit of grace. Whoa! Look at that. Uh, if you don't think that's enough, look at verse uh, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. See that? See that? Faith alone, and he won't lose his salvation because the death of Jesus Christ covered it all. No, keep reading. But if any man, what? Draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Well, that has nothing to do with your salvation. Keep reading, verse 39. But we are not of them who draw back unto what? Perdition. Perdition. But of them that believe to the what? Saving of the soul. That's salvation. Oh, so says some guy who turns 60 years old and pale white skin trolls every Bible believer online and goes like this and then says, well, this has nothing to do with salvation. Look, it has to the saving of the soul right here. He's not a King James only person, perhaps, and that should trouble you. You should read the verse as it says. That what, that's what makes us King James only. We read the verse as it says, and we're not afraid to divide it. We divide this. Okay, what's the issue right here? The issue is this. The issue is that it's not how you view that. It's how God views it. You got to realize this. How God views this is that it's actually disgracing his blood and his death. Because if you sin willfully, think about it. Use your head at the tribulation. You get saved and then by Jesus' blood and you receive that and you say, now I'm going to go ahead and take the mark of the beast. You think that God's going to go, okay, go to heaven? No, this is like totally disgracing, deliberate to his blood. That's, That's the idea what God's looking at. That's why this makes so much sense right here. It's not the issue of, no, his death is insufficient. No, the issue that God is looking at is you're doing disgrace, dishonor to it. So that's the issue that God is looking at right here. Here's another part. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. Another thing is this. Another thing is you don't have the right. Hebrews 10 showed that. You don't have the right to use the blood of Christ however way you want, see? Amen. You know who has the right to use his blood however way he wants? It's God. God has the right to use the blood however way he wants. So how he uses his blood right here is that he, however way he wants it to be applied, the application and the condition for the blood, it goes by his terms, not by your terms. Amen. Now to us saved Christians in the church, what is our application? What is our condition? We believe, right? But what's the tribulation? It's not just this. You know what it is? There's works involved here. There is no doubt that there is faith and works involved here. Now, if you deny it, then let's just read the verse, okay? Look at Revelation chapter 7, and then we'll read verse 14. The Bible says, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of what time period? Great tribulation. So what happens in the great tribulation? And have what? Washed their robes. Did it say the lamb washed them or they themselves washed their robes? They washed the robes. I believe, my friend, that I had nothing to work in my salvation. I was the active part in salvation. 
I was the passive. I was the one in the receiving end. Jesus Christ was the one who washed me. Yeah. I didn't have to wash my robe in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. All Jesus Christ, he washed away my sins for me. Amen. That's what he did. But these people, they have to wash it themselves. Now, if you still deny me on that one, uh, one, I guess you don't understand the importance of being in the passive, the receiving end of salvation. Why do you want to be in the active end? And a work is something active. Work is something active. Works for salvation. Active. See, that should be troubling. But let's just uh, skip that, okay? Let's look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Look at this. When they resist the Antichrist and the persecution of hell, you're honestly saying there is no work involved in that? Oh, you're saved by faith, but yeah, you will still resist the mark of the beast. Really? That's really only faith alone? How well are you living your Christian life not denying the name of Jesus under so-called persecution, a light persecution today? How well are you doing on that one? See, you're not doing so well. What more under the Antichrist hell system? See, that's a lot more work involved. That's pretty honest right there. But let's look at this. How does God define that? He realizes that this has to do with work. Verse 11, and they overcame him. See that? By the what? Blood of the lamb. But keep reading here. What's in the context here? And by the word of their testimony. That makes sense. Hebrews 10 said, see these Hebrews in the last days, as Hebrews chapter 1 said to you, if they draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in them. How's your testimony? Now keep reading here. Notice it says, as we continue reading, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, and they what? Love not their lives unto the what? Death. See, this has to do where they shed their blood for Jesus Christ. That's what it has to do with getting the condition and the application of the blood right here. But because you people keep saying, no, it must be faith no matter what. It must be faith no matter what. Then how are you, this is a hard answer. How are you going to answer concerning the mark of the beast? That's honestly work. So they have no choice but to retreat to a lordship salvation or a Calvinist interpretation where you don't believe that God can't protect his elect? You don't believe that God can protect his elect? Who taught you that? Who taught you that? Mm -hmm. Unless you had a Calvinist background before, maybe? <laughs> Unless you really hate what the verse exactly says, so you have to use Calvinist logic like they do? Yeah. See? Look at this. This has nothing to do with free will, then. This has to do with God's sovereignty, with no free will involved right here. See, that should be very troubling to you. That's what makes... It's dispensationalist, the right doctrine. It is so effective against all heresies and wrong doctrines out there. And these kind of IFB people or people who hate dispensational salvations, who argue this kind of thing where God will protect his elect, you talk like this new cultic fringe. There's a, new, there's a cultic fringe called new IFB. And these guys are so weird that these people... They hate the nation of Israel, and these people will say that if you're a sodomite, then you can never get saved. You're forever reprobate. These cultic new IFB people, you share their teaching that, oh, it's impossible that the elect, that they'll receive the mark of the beast. You're joining their crowd. Another thing is you're joining the Calvinist crowd with lordship salvation. And it's very funny to me that you guys who hate dispensational salvation try to argue against lordship salvation. Well, how are you going to argue against lordship salvation if you're supporting this notion? Come 